coach position earlier this year. And Maddie Wright gets set to face Jada Coleman. Tiare Jennings moves up into the two spot. And then Ella Parker here on this Sunday afternoon as the first pitch misses low, says Frederick Ewald, our home plate umpire today. Coleman scored three runs, reached three times yesterday, including a base knock to lead things off against Maddie Keel in a first inning that Oklahoma will never forget. They batted around before the first out was recorded. Coleman with three hits this series. The All-American center fielder takes just low and outside, and once again, these Red Raider pitchers have to feel like they are not getting any favors here at home. A tight zone yesterday plagued the pitching, and once again on a 2-0 pitch. The count pushes to 3-0, but there is finally a strike called. Following Jennings and Parker, Alyssa Brito bumped into the cleanup spot. Sydney Sanders has slowly seen her spot in the lineup drop from two to four to now five. Coleman takes a strike on the inner half, and then the freshman Cassidy Pickering, who had a towering home run in the first inning yesterday, followed by Alina Torres. Riley Ludlum, the Fordham transfer catcher who has walked six times this weekend, gets the start once again for Kinsey Hansen. As Coleman lifts one out to left and falls in front of Ariana Villa for a leadoff single. Riley Boone will round things out with Nicole May in the circle for Oklahoma today. Meanwhile, Texas Tech's defense lines up very similarly to what we've seen all season long with Via Holloman and Elder left to right in the outfield. Love, Oric, Jennings, and Barnhart in the infield with Kennedy Kreitz catching and Kaylee Wyckoff the DP as Maddie Wright can't find the zone on a rise ball up and in to Tiare Jennings who has lit the world on fire here this weekend as she usually does in Lubbock. Had a career high tying six RBI game on Friday. Backed it up with three RBIs yesterday and another double, which was Jennings 58th, tying her with Sydney Romero atop the Oklahoma leaderboard. Jennings hitting 438, second on the team behind Ella Parker, who bats behind her. Six hitters hitting 400 or higher on this senior team as Jennings fouls it back and evens the count two and two. It almost feels unfair when Gasso puts Coleman and Jennings back to back. Two very similar power threats that add the five tools. As Wright fills the count here in the top of the first inning. Texas Tech, a defense that turned two double plays yesterday. Nation leading 19 this season. Looking for a hard hit ground ball at someone here on the 3-2 pitch. That's what they'll get. A little bit slower than they wanted though. And only one option is to fire across the diamond, and Love is on target out to the Alabama transfer in Barnhart for a much needed out number one. Number five, Coleman Parker. moves over to second, and Ella Parker comes to the plate here in the first. Parker three for four with three RBIs and a double yesterday. That followed an 0 for three game on Friday for the Phenom freshman. Hard hit ground ball finds the seam and into center field it goes as Ella Parker continues to contribute her 26th RBI of the year and the Sooners are on top again. You know, I wonder how many games this season Oklahoma has been shut down in the first inning. They just jump on the scoreboard with consistency. And a 26 and one record this season. 
lone loss came earlier this month. An extra innings to Louisiana. As Alyssa Brito steps into the right-hand batter's box. 0 for 1 with a run yesterday as Parker will take second, her second stolen base of the series. And on a throw from Kreitz that hits her shoe, and the Parker will chase the 60 feet over to third base on the air. Wonder if Parker will be up early on Wednesday. 5 a.m. Central Time opening day over in Korea, where Uncle Dave Roberts will be leading the Dodgers. Wright's able to find the zone in the count 0 and 2. I know I'll try to be up, at least to catch the back half. Dodgers, Padres in Seoul on ESPN. Good waste pitch there by Maddie Wright. Senior from Fort Worth who grew up playing with a lot of these in-state Travel ball athletes. Spent four years at UNC Charlotte uh, as a check swing keeps the at bat alive from Brito. Six and three mark for Maddie Wright. In her 45th inning work with 31 strikeouts and 18 walks. There's Coach Patty Gasso in her 30th season. For a fourth straight national championship. Gasso will, of course, once again be the benefactor of location with Oklahoma City, the site of the Big 12 tournament and the Women's College World Series. Ooh, that was a good pitch. If only Kreitz had framed it a little better. So the count runs full here with one out in the first. Maddie Wright doing her job, keeping the barrels off the bat. Couple seeing eye singles here in the first inning. That time called behind home plate. Lead off single by Coleman. Jennings grounded her over to second before Parker singled on a ground ball up the middle. Parker would steal second and move to third on the air. Three, two popped up. Wright gets the soft contact, but the wind will add swirling effects for Kreitz as it finds its way out of play. So the fourth foul ball in this AB from Alyssa Brito. Swinging. A massive strikeout for Wright. And there's two down here in the top of the first. Batting for the Sooners, number one, Sydney Sanders. It brings up the nation's player of the week, whether it's the NFCA, Division I softball or the Big 12, all honored Sidney Sanders this past week. Who had four hits against Iowa State, all of them home runs, and five official plate appearances, then picked up home runs in both games of the doubleheader on Tuesday, but Texas Tech has refused to let her beat them. Sanders walked four times on Friday as she takes a strike down the middle. It was one for three yesterday with an RBI single in that first inning. Currently hitting 383 with 10 home runs to tie Riley Love atop the conference. She'll go around on this rise. Ball in the count one and two is Maddie Wright. One strike away from a miraculous magician's jig to get out of this jam. 
With a runner at third and one out. Struck out Brito. Now the one-two pitch is crushed foul. Walker at third, and a change up, misses the zone, but it couldn't have been by more than a centimeter. Natty Reich again cannot believe she did not get the call. And a strike zone the size I'm not even going to say it. It misses inside and the count runs full. So by Coach Gasson's face there, I'm not sure her challenge was successful. But I am confident that the delay tactic to ice the pitcher was. And so now the 3-2 delivery will get set. Right feeling like she has to put one right down the middle to get a strike call. So go rise ball and it's lifted out to left for a single. And that was just a matter of time with Texas Tech getting squeezed by the umpire. Oklahoma will take a two nothing lead. As Sanders pops one out to left. Batting for the Sooners, number seven, Cassidy Pickering. So it brings up the freshman Cassidy Pickering here with Oklahoma up 2-0 in the first. Hey, a called strike. What are the odds? The count 0-1. Here to Pickering with two outs in the top of the first inning. So right for First ahead in the count 0-2 as Oklahoma has knocked in two runs on three singles. Two to Pickering. Evens the count here with two outs in the first inning. Wright is ready for the 2 2. Oklahoma, who has to be up there in the nation's leaders in pitches taken. There's quite the eye. Pickering yeah. will work the walk. So an inning that looked to be over with a couple strike throws that were called that balls to Sanders. And instead of a one nothing lead into the bottom of the first, Oklahoma now leads two nothing with two on in the top of the first. Lita Torres, who homered on Friday. So our batting average rise to 380 as she swings at the first pitch, lifts one out to Elder in right. And Maddie Wright had to throw a couple extra pitches, but gets through the side as Oklahoma State 12-1 on Tuesday. Preseason All-American in May. With an 8-0 mark as Barnhart jumps all over the first pitch high. And they change their speeds with a rise, drop, change, and curve. Coach Gasso mentioned she certainly thrives when she stays up in the zone and forces chases. But Nicole May has not needed to go deep this year. Her season high is only four innings. In fact, she has not thrown more than 80 pitches in an outing. 
certainly feels weird to say. I'm sure the Sooners will like to see her open up a little bit more into conference play, getting her ready for her final postseason run. Now Barnhart goes chasing after the 1 1 changeup. With Via, Love, and Wyckoff to follow. All four top of this lineup hitting over 320. In fact, seven of the nine for Craig Snyder's crew hitting over 300. And another changeup has Nicole May's 44th strikeout of the season. And in fact, if May were to pick up the win here today, it would sit solo 10th all time, 57 wins. Maybe the best winning percentage of anyone on that list with just three losses. As Ariana Villa comes off of her first inning home run yesterday and takes another off-speed pitch for a strike. Via the senior who has moved from second base to center field, now left field. Six home runs, six doubles this year as she tries to find a gap, loving to go the other way. With Boone, Coleman, and Pickering left to right in the outfield. Brito, Jennings, Torres, and Sanders left to right in the infield. And Riley Mudlum, the SoCon Player of the Year. Back behind home plate, the transfer from Furman in her graduate senior season. The two has Via unable. No, she did check the swing, so able to check her swing there. You can hear the groan from the crowd. That goes to show how many Oklahoma fans have made the trek down. I have to imagine there's a large contingent living in Texas as well. Two and two. It would certainly be telling to see if Frederick Ewald's tiny zone stretches here into the bottom half of innings. It would certainly make Texas Tech fans a little bit more relieved about the catastrophe of the strike zone in the top of the first. 2-2 two -two pitch and Villa goes down on strikes. Just an absolute dandy of a drop. And Nicole May has two quick strikeouts here in the first inning. Brings up just the real story here in 2024 in Lubbock. And that's Riley Love's ascent to excellency. And hit 200 around there the last two years, up to 350 with 10 home runs, a career high already. 36 RBIs, nine doubles, and two triples for Love. Waiting to see when the NFCA or Softball America, D1 Softball, starts to pick up on Riley Love's success. Just foul down that first baseline. As Love and Sanders both clinging atop the Big 12 home run leaderboard with 10. Riley, who missed the opener in this series, dealt with a little bit of an illness, but bounced back nicely to get back in the lineup yesterday. Coming off of an 0 for 1 game is Love. He was hit by a pitch. Now count 2 and 1. from Pleasanton, California. I believe it's up in that Bay Area. The off speed is certainly working. You can see how many Oklahoma fans got prime real estate back there behind home plate. The count now two and two. And two outs in the bottom of the first. Great take by Love. Ludlum, Boone, and Coleman. Two up in the top of the second for the Sooners. And Love will work a two out walk here in the first. The Red Raiders need just one big swing here from Kaylee Wyckoff to wipe out the top of the first inning. Kaylee Wyckoff. Go, 
Wyckoff reached twice on Friday. A walk and a hit by pitch. Smashed a home run in the fourth inning yesterday. There was no scoring between Villa's home run in the first and Wyckoff's home run in the fourth. And then a three-run fifth inning put the game out of hand. After that 12-run first set the stage for Oklahoma. But things have settled down a bit here in game three with OU just scoring two in the first as Wyckoff takes low and outside. RBIs by Parker and Sanders as Oklahoma picked up three singles in the top of the first inning. There's a check swing on one and two. It's even the count, two and two. Love over at first base here with two outs in the first. And the 2-2 two -two to Wyckoff is squibbed back to May. He fires over to Sanders to send us to the second with a couple strikeouts to Nicole May. So Maddie right back out there here for the second inning of this contest. Riley Ludlum will lead things off for Oklahoma as she takes high. Very funny. Evolution growing. I saw someone mention it on X or Twitter. <laughs> there is a, a man behind home plate that is delivering the count after every pitch. Go ahead and keep an eye. You know, we appreciate everybody, mostly students, that help us with our camera work and certainly a situation that you guys can see with no count on the graphic up top. But there you see them. 3-0 is the count. Our own umpire and what is that? Orange, brown, back there in the second or third row behind home plate as Ludlum has not seen many strikes this weekend. There's one in the count three and one. Ludlam got the start yesterday, walked three times. A run and an RBI. So she has walked six times this weekend and that will make it seven. She has only made contact twice in nine at-bats. Batting for the Sooners, number zero, Riley Boone. Zero. Riley Boone gets serenaded as she approaches the left-hand batter's box. Looks to bunt, she can't own one. This will be a tough play. Jennings has to hurry and does so as the freshman throws out the senior. And it works like a bunt for the first out here in the second. To the top of the lineup, Sooner Nation goes as Jada Coleman comes to the plate. She smashes one to left. And it's caught! Via collides with the wall. And a hustle play by Ludlam to get back to second on an absolute robbery here in Lubbock. Shades of Peyton Blythe a few years ago. Remember when she went over the fence out in a preseason tournament as Ludlam 
will be evaluated. And that is two outs. And a chance for Maddie Wright to put together a shutdown second. As Jennings takes a strike, and the fans and cheering dugout for Texas Tech really getting into it now. A one, side to center. Holloman is there, and it is a shutdown inning for Wright. As Texas Tech's defense shines behind Villa's leaping grab. Clean first inning for Nicole May, as she will take on Elder Jennings and Orrick. Up by two runs here in the bottom of the second. And the Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. Elder 0 for 2. In the game yesterday. Had a single and a walk on Friday. Okay. Push the count to 2-0. That means hitting 328 with an OBP of over 400 this season. And might this provide quite the spark? We saw Elder and Jennings connect on a rally starter on Friday. And Elder will slap one right into the waiting glove of Sanders, who taps the bag for out number one. Sanders has played a very solid first base this season. In her second Addie year the Red as a Sooner. 14, and talking Jenny. to Coach Gasso this week, she really emphasized the growing pains that it takes to go from a top player transfer to Oklahoma, like Sanders did after an All-American freshman year in Tempe. And last season was filled with those growing pains, but now Sidney Sanders feeling free, is what she told Coach Gasso. That's exactly what a coach wants to hear. There's Reagan Jennings, the freshman. <laughs> Takes a pair in the count 0 and 2. Jennings making her 16th start of the year here in game 29. She's now a stable in the middle of this lineup. Second in steals with three. And strokes it off the glove of Torres for a single here with one out in the second in Texas Tech's first hit. Megan Jennings now has a pair of hits here this weekend and even gave a little bit of a, whether it was a thank you to Torres there. I know I got away with one, it just hit right off the glove. And a chance here for Abby Orrick, who has six home runs this season. Warwick had six home runs back in 2022, five last year, looking to set a new career high. Huge hat. Evens the count here at one and one. We lost our count guy there in the third row. Now, now one and two. Hopefully he makes a safe journey back to his seat. And May is able to slide one by Oric for out number two. It's Nicole May's third strikeout here this afternoon. Heading for the Red Raiders, number eight, Kennedy Kreitz. First pitch swinging, Kennedy Kreitz, skies one out of play. Take there by Kreitz, who had the day off yesterday. Go for two with a couple strikeouts against Kelly Maxwell, who caved 10 in six shutout innings in Friday's win. Maxwell has now put together 
a string of scoreless innings that leads the team as Jennings stays put over at first after Kirsten Deal's 22 inning scoreless streak was snapped in the first yesterday. Maxwell has now gone 24 consecutive innings and if this game stays tight, I would not be surprised if Coach Gasso goes to Maxwell to try to shut the door. Two and two the count here to the right-handed hitting senior with a runner at first and two outs. Logan Halliman waiting on deck. Two, two squibbed over to third. Frito is there, and another clean inning for Nicole May. Sends us to the... Top of the third inning, and the freshman Ella Parker, who has had a terrific Lubbock debut, takes low. Parker had three hits. Three RBIs, three runs scored yesterday. Also stole a base, then singled in a run, and stole a base and scored back in the first inning. So she's responsible for both of the runs today. As the count evens here against Maddie Wright, who has been absolutely dealing today, Wright. A revelation with the loss of three of the team's key pitchers last season. Mackenzie Herzog, Kendall Fritz graduated and lost Sage Hoover for the year. So meeting a big addition, Coach Snyder goes to the portal, picks up Maddie Wright. A good take there by Parker, evens the count two and two. Now if Wright can put together a second scoreless inning and really give her offense some confidence, the top of the lineup due up in the bottom of the third. That looked like a strike. The zone, microscopic here for Maddie Wright, and the count runs full three and two. Low roller over to first. It's gonna have to hustle, and Barnhart able to stomp the bag just in time for out number one. And that was a near mirror image of yesterday when Parker was able to beat out a roller to first Adding in the first series, inning. Number 33, Alyssa but Barnhart has learned her lesson. Do not take any of that for granted. And we move to the four hitter in Brito who struck out swinging in the first. That was a friendly strike call on the outer. Rito, who spent her first season as a shortstop for Oregon. Now a stable third over at third base, coming off of a first team All-American campaign where she hit 17 home runs, 17 doubles. As the count evens one and one. Funny enough, she has seven home runs and seven doubles this season. Does such a class act as well, Alyssa Brito. One of the good ones that you can root for no matter what side you're on. As Brito lifts one lazily out to center that dies at the warning track for Halliman. Not number two. Tell me the freshmen on this team aren't having a little bit of fun as Halliman. Batting for the Sooners, number one, Sydney. Not Sanders. wearing any green though. That's the thing. You know, we, we can make as much fun as we want about St. Patty's Day. And I think some of the players for Mental Health Awareness Week have continued to wear the green bows, but I don't see too many of them today. And this all red, and crimson, black, cream matchup. Sydney Sanders, RBI single in the first in that controversial at bat that featured a few strike three calls that went by the wayside. Could have had this game one nothing. There's the, the pitch count. Back behind the zone. As we sit 0-2. Now 1-2. And Matt 
Maddie Wright looking for a one, two, three inning. One of the rarer feats against this murderer's row of hitters from Norman. A great take by Sanders, evens the count, fills the count in fact, three and two. Walk work forces a little bit of extra tension here in the top of the third inning as Cassidy Pickering comes to the plate. Pickering walked in her first at bat. A ball on the inner half. Maddie Wright's body language tells it all. How am I supposed to pitch against the best team in the nation if you can't pick the corner? One and one to count. And I think Oklahoma fans would agree with me there. Despite the bias. I know a lot of you guys on social media will disagree. And that's the beauty of this country we live in, isn't it? As the count moves to two and one. To the count. Sanders over at first base with a two out walk. After Oklahoma scored two in the first, here we sit with two outs in the top of the third. Prize ball, skied out to center where Holloman waits. And one, two, three, four goes the Sooners here in the third inning. Holding on to that 2 0 edge as the Red Raiders will send the 9 1. Start here through two innings. And I should take on the nine hitter in Logan Halliman. Halliman Barnhart Villa. A slow roller here on a swinging bunt. Tough play for Brito, but she'll make it with ease to grab the speedy freshman for out number one. for the Red Raiders, number 24, Aubrey Barnhart. So to the top of the lineup, Texas Tech goes. To reach base the first time through against Nicole May as Barnhart rips one foul, very similar to her first swing against Nicole May back in the first inning. May this season started with three shutout innings against Utah Valley and went four, allowing three unearned in a tight win over Washington. Three earned runs the first of the season on February 23rd against Mississippi State. And got hit hard in that wild 9-7 win over Miami, Ohio. Three innings, three runs with five walks for May. Very uncharacteristic. In fact, May has just walked one here since that Ohio outing. In 13 innings, just one walk. Now two for May, with one today. And ooh, Barnhart gets caught right in the funny bone. She goes down in the heap at first base. Snyder in the second Number season. Zero, Franklin, Kentucky native who has turned around this Texas Tech program. New single season record in home runs last year. Top 10 in the nation in home runs and doubles this season. As Ariana Villa takes high. 
Dribbles one in that 3-4 hole. Tough play. Via goes head first and is safe. An infield single for Via. Sparks momentum for Texas Tech here in the bottom of the third. Started March with two home runs on March 2nd. And there's a quick review. Seven RBIs against Merrimack. Three home runs on Tuesday for Love against New Mexico. And that's what we like, quick reviews. And Nicole May looks for a ground ball here at someone. So the defense try to get her out of this jam. Two on, one out in the bottom of the third inning. Walked in her first plate appearance and takes high and inside. Huge cut there on a drop ball. Who's top just completely came off there from May. A beautiful pitch. We'll count one and one. Love into the 5 6 hole. Station to station goes Reigns, and Texas Tech has the bases loaded. We're down two in the third with one out. Talk about prime opportunities. The Red Raiders stranded the bases loaded on Friday. And have certainly discussed this situational hitting. But they didn't have Kaylee Wyckoff at the plate on Friday, I'll tell you that. So last season's freshman of the year in the Big 12. The biggest moment of this contest so far. Grounded out for the Red back to May to end the first inning. 402 hitter at the plate for the home run yesterday. Good strike to start the at bat for May. The super senior. Another slow roller. This is Bobble though, it's short and everybody's safe as Jennings throws home. And Via is out trying to score from second. So extra aggressive base running. We'll see how they rule that as Texas Tech will score one on the ground ball by Wyckoff. But what a play by Jennings to recognize Via was Churning for home. Raiders, two, and now Demi Elder. Elder comes to the plate here with two outs and runners on the corners. Everybody kept running. Elder takes high. My best guess is going to be a E6. But we're still waiting on the official signal. Well, they will call it a single by Wyckoff. And then six to two on the throwout as Jen Rocha, the legendary pitching coach, comes out to have a word. In her sixth season with Oklahoma, she made the move after OU beat her Florida Gators in the championship back in the middle of the at bat as well. The count is one and oh. Went out to chat with her infield. 
veteran crew. Yare and Brito on the left side. Arizona State transfers on the right side in Torres and Sanders as Elder is ready in the count one and zero. In this tight game three, but the Red Raiders looking to beat the number one team in the nation for the first time since 1998. They toppled Arizona. Two and one the count. Elder rolls over to one to Torres. And so Texas Tech gets one back. But their base running costs them. And we head to the fourth with Oklahoma up by just one. Answer, I stand up for my grandmother, Jeanette Fun. Leading off for the Sooners, Love number you, 40, Alina Torres. Top of the fourth inning as Alina Torres leads things off. Maddie Wright has been dealing back to back scoreless frames for the senior as she finds the zone on the outer half to Torres. Fly out to end the first for Alina Torres. Her second home run of the season on Friday as she falls behind in the count 0-2. Torres came off the bench yesterday, had a hit and two at-bats. This one up the middle, right, let it go, thinking there was a defender behind her, but no one in the vicinity as Torres leads off the fourth with a base knock. We know with this Oklahoma offense, we Avery Hodge will come in and pinch run here. This offense can put up runs in a hurry. We've seen it in consecutive innings this weekend. Runner, with eight runs in the seventh on Avery Friday Hodge. and then 12 in the first yesterday. Batting for the Sooners, number 30, Riley Ludlum. Riley Ludlum, who has worked seven walks in nine plate appearances. On a bluffed steal attempt there by Hodge, Ludlum takes a rare strike. He has not seen many strikes here this weekend. Has shown an impeccable talent to view pitches in the zone. This account evens one and one. Meanwhile, I mentioned there were first base opportunities off the bench for Texas Tech, and Dee McClarity will come in to replace Barnhart, who hopefully is able to shake off that elbow injury on the hit by pitch. by Ludlum, evens the count two and two. Pop up into center, you can see that Flag in center is not moving much, so Halliman with very little trouble on a few of these fly balls. We have seen the wind act up here at the Rock. But this weekend it has cooperated. So with one out to the nine spot we go, and Riley Boone. Batting for seniors, number zero, Riley Boone. 
Boone with two hits, an RBI yesterday, a hit and an RBI on Friday. Take the first pitch outside from Maddie Wright. Uh-oh. A boon balloon on the loose. Good job by our cameraman. On a hit and run, a hesitant Kreitz throws late, and Hodge will take second base. So count one and one here with one out in the fourth as Oklahoma looks to retake that two run edge. And Boone slapped into center, up and up for Holloman, whose speed can catch up for out number two. Hodge will look to tag and again using her speed to go from first to third here on the last two pitches. Freshman from Flower Mound, out patrolling center. Sets things up here with two outs for Jada Coleman. Number 24, Jada Coleman. And this is exactly the situation that Oklahoma was in in the first inning. Two outs, runner on third, up by one, and they were able to get the run in. That was Sanders who got the single as Wright pulls the string for out at number one. Just a little low. Very similar pitch from right in the count one and two. This one gets the call. Big moment, 2-2 two -two pitch, two outs in the fourth. And Coleman laces one to left. Villa is there. Wright puts together a third scoreless inning. And the Red Raiders. We got a good one here on this Sunday afternoon in West Texas. 2-1 lead, bottom of the fourth inning for Oklahoma. That's Reagan Jennings who singled Last at bat. In fact, her single was off the glove of Alina Torres, who has been replaced by Avery Hodge over at second base. One and one to count here from Nicole May, who has allowed four, run, four hits on one run with one walk and three strikeouts here through three. I mentioned it a little bit earlier in the broadcast, May's season high is just four innings. Might Coach Gasso ask her to go a little deeper or will we see the likes of Kelly Maxwell? Who spun a gem on Friday of 10 strikeouts in six innings, no runs. As the one two pitch is driven out into the glove of the waiting Hodge. Isn't that just how the sport works? You come off the bench, the ball finds you. I think I've called about six games here in the last 10 days. And in almost every game, a defensive replacement gets the ball hit at them nearly immediately. The they just Raiders, love it. Number 11, you don't want to get Orick. too cold out there off the bench. And so with one out, Abby Oric comes to the plate. Oric will swing at the first pitch. It squeaks under the glove of Brito. And a one-out error gives Texas Tech a base runner and brings the go-ahead run to the plate here in the fourth. So E5 there. 
Sets things up for Kennedy Kreitz. Batting for the Red Raiders, number eight, Kennedy Kreitz. On the count here from Nicole May, who has her ears covered on this 50 degree overcast Sunday. Well, the official score here has just changed the ruling from error to single. So Oryx, one out single, sets the stage. Scoreboard had E up there, but they have since reversed it. A weak roller out to Hodge. Oh, we have a collision. And this will most likely lead to a Texas Tech out as the runner impedes Avery Hodge's path to the ball. That's exactly what the fans are frustrated with, and Coach Snyder will come on out, but I don't think he has much of a case. See how good my knowledge is of the book. The runner will be out. It will be considered a batter's interference. So it'll count as an out there for Kreitz, but Boric is the one who is out. And so Kreitz will replace her over at first, which also doesn't feel right, because usually in a situation like that, the play is dead. Batting for the Red Raiders. But nevertheless, seven, there are two Logan outs Holliman. here. Logan Holloman down by one in the fourth. And the first pitch from May misses outside. Jennings, Parker, Brito. The sluggers in the lineup do up in the top of the fifth. Oklahoma absolutely cruised by Iowa State last weekend. This is their first real nail biter in conference play. In one of that Cyclone series, Oklahoma was tied heading into the bottom of the third. Brito had a single and then Sanders blew it open with a three run blast in the fourth. But it was still close, four nothing the final. Iowa State, then run ruled in games two and three as the 2 1 pitch is bunted foul. Alleman, who comes from Flower Mound High School, started the season with hits in four of her first five. Great take here, will fill the count and send the tying run in motion. There's the payoff delivery. Driven off the body of May and everybody's safe. And Holloman is able to send it to the top of the lineup where D. McClarity is due up due to the injury to Barnhart. Run. I see D. McClarity. Adding for the Red Raiders, number 20, D. McClarity. Sophomore from Garland, who had 11 hits and 40 at bats last season. Has already seven hits and 30 at bats this year. With three doubles and nine RBIs as McClarity takes high inside. 
tense moments in every inning. This has been a fun one here between Oklahoma, the number one team, and Tech, who sits in the top 30 RPI. Two and zero with Via on deck. Parity's first at bats of the weekend. Taking all the way in the count, two and one. Parity zero for two with a run scored. 10 days ago at BYU. Two and two the count on a good pitch by May. This next out will tie Nicole May's season high with four innings pitch. Two, two. Down on strikes. Nicole May works out of a jam. And Oklahoma will send the meat of their lineup. Top of the fifth in a one-run ball game. As T.R.A. Jennings swings at the first pitch from Maddie Wright. Gets one out to Elder for a quick and much, much needed out number one as Texas Tech holding their breath every time the top of this Oklahoma lineup comes to the plate after they scored 29 runs in the first two games. But Maddie Wright not been wrong today. In fact, you know, you can go back to the first inning if you want to see how Oklahoma scored. It was three singles, real professional at-bats, but even Wright and her Modesty will tell you she thought she struck out Sydney Sanders to keep it one nothing in the first, but Oklahoma was able to scratch across the second on Sanders' two out single. That is the important run right now as Ella Parker takes her strike in the count one and one. Parker set the stage in the first, an RBI single, stole second, moved to third on the error, scored on the Sanders single. The zone has been small all day long. And Wright has been a trooper, nevertheless. The count moves to two and one. Oh, Alyssa Brito, Sidney Sanders to follow. Tense moments here in the fifth inning. Hold one out to second. Tremendous play, but Jennings can't make the throw. Parker runs into McClarity, and you saw the arm of the umpire is gonna be interference anyways, as she moves to second on the air. So Parker with two bases here with one out in the fifth. An opportunity for Brito to add some insurance. for the Sooners, number 33, Alyssa Brito. Brito 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a fly out to deep center. Crack! Unbelievable crack of the bat there! The sound effects tells the story of Brito's eighth home run. Did the ball break or what? What a swing from Brito. And it's 4-1 Oklahoma. Would love to know the exit velocity and the distance on that one from Brito as she wound up just a few feet shy of a home run in her first at bat. First home run here today for the Sooners. Uh, Sanders takes high and outside, and now there will be a real test for Maddie Wright to stay engaged. This is where you learn a lot about a pitcher. Go, 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 go. 
Sanders and Pickering do up here with one out. There's a strike call to even the count one and one. We have our friendly umpire back behind home plate giving you all the balls and strikes. We appreciate him. And a pop up handled by McClarity for out number two. Batting for the Sooners, number seven, Cassidy Pickering. So a tremendous play made by Jennings, ruled an error. Followed by the Brito home run. So two earned runs allowed thus far by Matty Wright. Good pitch on the outer half to Pickering, who walked in the first, flew out in the third. She had a home run yesterday for her fourth of the season. Strike away. Just out of the grasp of Kreitz on that foul tip. there by Frederick Ewald makes Pickering laugh. Two and two, it stays. <laughs> and a change up, freezes Pickering and sends us to the bottom of the fifth. Brito's two run bash gives Oklahoma their largest lead here today. Leading off for the Red Raiders, number double zero, Ariana Villa. And so into the fifth inning goes Nicole May. Longest outing of her senior season as Ariana Villa takes outside. And once again, we'd like to thank all of the students that are a part of this broadcast. Here on St. Patty's Day weekend, the cameramen and women, Scott Edwards and David Hoagland, our producers and audio technicians here on the Big 12 Now on ESPN Plus all weekend long. Meanwhile, Oklahoma baseball leading the Big 12 with a 5-0 start. They had a crazy finish yesterday at TCU for an upset series win. Texas Tech looks to win the series today in the rubber game against Baylor. He has singled in the third. And goes down on strikes here to start the fifth. A little wagon wheel introduces Riley Love with one out. Down by three runs in this tight contest. Heading for the Red Raiders, number five, Riley Love. And I'm sure both coaches will tell you they can learn a lot about their ball club in games like this. 
for Craig Snyder. Patience and veteran leadership dealing with umpires that have not quite gone their way as Riley Love gets hit by this pitch. For Oklahoma, finally a tight one. Batting for the Red Raiders, number 13, Kaylee Wyckoff. As Kaylee Wyckoff comes to the plate, looking to repeat her big swing from yesterday. And she'll take a rip. Deep right center. Coleman will grab it just shy of the wall. And that close to bringing this one back to a one-run ball game. There's out number two here in the fifth inning. Meanwhile, Hannah Kaur has come in for Pickering, moved into left field, pushing Riley Love, excuse me, Riley Boone out to right. There's Riley Love. For the Red Raiders, Scampered back two, to first Elder. base. Demi Elder comes to the play here with two outs, and she'll swing at the first pitch and foul it off. Hodge, Ludlum, and Boone. Seven, eight, nine, due up for OU in the sixth. And May is one strike away from sending us there. One and two. Down ball over to Sanders, and we are off to the sixth. OU, a three run lead here in the series finale. Avery Hodge leads things off here in the top of the sixth inning. Her first plate appearance today after pinch running and filling into second base for Torres. Maddie Wright, who has been dealing five innings, two earned runs. Scattered five hits with three walks as well, but the two run home run Really set this one apart, and it was Brito's bash. Picked in their first strike. Ludlum to follow. Boone in the hole. Wright has been able to silence the bottom of the lineup today. I think 3 1 bunt attempt by Hodge fills the count. Right. Maddie Wright, a pair of seniors. With Abby Oric listening in. Hodge one for four, got the start yesterday with an RBI and a run. And she will slap this out to left for a leadoff single. If Oklahoma can get this lineup back to the top here this inning, it could be in a situation where they may see a new Texas Tech pitcher. The question is, for the Sooners, number can Matty Wright work out of another jam here? 
We have seen the resilience of Wright this year. As Quincy Lilio will pinch hit for Ludlum, who had the hand injury in the field a couple innings ago while running. So Coach Gasso takes no risks, nor should she. We saw Lilio go 0 for 2 back on Friday. And she takes high and outside. Lilio chops one to short. Quick trigger over to first. What a throw by Oric for the out. Adding for the Sooners, number zero. And it brings things down to Riley, Riley Boone. Boone as Texas Tech's defense. Despite a few errors, uh, certainly saved runs today. He had that tremendous catch made by Via in left. A drag bunt look by Boone starts the at bat 0 and 1. A lot to be excited about if you're a Texas Tech fan. Take a trip out to Ames on Friday. Three games against Iowa State. And you host UCF here in two weekends, starting on Thursday as the infield was drawn in a bit with the slap hitting Boone and she'll find center field with an RBI single. Oklahoma has continued to show their versatility with now six singles of their seven hits today. Talk about adding paper cuts and watching them stack up. As Jada Coleman comes to the plate following Boone's third RBI of the series. Coleman singled and scored in the first, flew out twice to left, including the highlight reel jam, smashing against the wall. Ariana Villa's latest and greatest. Two and zero, the count here to Coleman. Runners on the move, a bit of a pitch out, and a great pickup by Oric, but the throw a little up on that shortstop side, so Boone will swipe her fourth bag of the season. Pitch in there for a strike. Runner has moved on to second base here with one out in the sixth. So a five pitch walk puts Coleman on. Coleman sets things up for Tiara Jennings now. Power threat. Enters this game with 82 home runs. 13 away from tying Lauren Chamberlain's mark at second. Behind Allo the Queen. One double away from setting the record. This will not do it though. Double play chance, but a little late there was Jennings and she'll grab it for the fielder's choice. Two outs now. And a 
key moment comes now for the freshman Parker. As you all at home know, if she hits a home run here, the mountain will be that much taller for Texas Tech. Takes a pitch up and in. It has not been a strike all day. So at least Ewald has shown consistency. Wright has two seven inning complete games this year against Tulsa and Stephen F. Austin. He has not thrown this many pitches since the Tulsa game on February 17th. The 2 1 pitch to Parker. Out away, evening the count. Down at the knees. And Kreitz didn't realize it, but that'll end the inning. So Maddie Wright with a massive strikeout to keep this game in question to the bottom. Reagan Jennings. Reagan Jennings leads things off here in the bottom of the sixth inning. She'll take a strike on the outer half. Jennings Oric Kreitz looking for a rally here for the Red Raiders. Oklahoma with two in the fifth, one in the sixth. After scoring two in the first, uh, Jennings with a swinging punt into no man's land, but the quick trigger by May is beautiful. Wow. There was that second. And you can see May like a skipping stone after the miscommunication between her and Ludlum there. Maddie for the Red Raiders, number 11. Not an issue. Brings up Abby Oric here with one out. Oric struck out in the second, singled through the left side back in the fourth inning. Looking to spark a rally. And Nicole May is thinking quite the opposite. Looking for a sooner sweep once again to stretch Oklahoma's Final Big 12 record to 6-0. And while Texas Tech two and three after taking two out of three at BYU. Red Raiders with their highest RPI since 2019. Sat at 27, 25 in the KPI entering this weekend. A one two pitch, or it goes around and May picks up her sixth strikeout. And a reminder that with the win today, Nicole May will pick up her 57th career win, putting her alone in 10th place in Sooner history. Number eight, Kennedy Kreitz. Those curious, May's season high in strikeouts is seven, one away. Right, lifted into right center and it falls and gets by Coleman. Kreitz will run into second base safely with a two out double. Freshman Holloman. What can she do here after sing singling to the pitcher in the fourth? Holloman the other way. What a grab! Brito 
again. That's how this game works, isn't it? You make a play in the field, you're almost always due up that next half inning. As Brito leads things off with a bash. Long gone. First the web gem, then her second home run of this afternoon, and Oklahoma's lead is five. Sydney Sanders. And so Sydney Sanders comes to the plate. Maddie Wright, who is able to bounce back from the home run by Brito in the fifth. And Sanders to pop out to first. Off speeds, pushes the count to three and zero. Oh. Oklahoma scored eight runs in the seventh inning. In a game that was six nothing, pushed to fourteen nothing on Friday. Here's a strike to Sanders, three and one. Full count, walk, but Sanders on with nobody out here in the seventh. Sooners, number 27, Hannah Coor. So pinch hitter here and pinch runner, excuse me, Maya Bland, while Coor came in last inning. So we'll see Hannah Coor's first at bat today. Pitch in the zone, runner takes second, and she is caught stealing. Bland is thrown out on a BB from Kreitz. And the strike called, so the count 0-2 here to court. Ball out to second. Jennings stays down on it and fires to first for the second out. Now 
Batting for the seniors, number 82, Avery Hodge. So we'll see Hodge, who singled in the sixth, scored the lone run last inning as Oklahoma has just steadily added insurance. Two runs in the first, excuse me, two runs in the fifth, a run in the sixth, and a run in the seventh for Oklahoma. Meanwhile, Texas Tech scored the run back in the third inning. Good looking change up there. There's an inside out swing, snagged at third. Oh, nearly picked up by McClarity. Defense has been at center stage for both teams here today. Love did everything, but the throw was a little low. So Oklahoma gets a base runner here with two outs. Ludlum trying to figure out if she can grip the bat with that wrapped up finger that she heard back in the second inning on the great play made by Via. Ludlum sliding back into second. Now the problem if you're Oklahoma is you can't hit for Ludlum again unless you want to take her out of the game. And with Hansen already under the weather, it is going to be Ludlum. For better or for worse here. And from what we've seen from Ludlum, she has not swung often this weekend. Walked seven times. So she may not be swinging at all. And the umpire continues that tight zone as this pitch misses inside. count here to Ludlum. But as a pitcher, there's got to be a sense of understanding what Ludlum is dealing with. However, Wright walks her on four pitches. And Ludlum celebrates. He didn't have to swing the bat. Adding to the seniors, number zero, Riley Boone. Two outs, two on, and a five-run lead for Oklahoma here in the seventh. As Riley Boone makes her fourth appearance at the plate. Connors will advance on this ball in the dirt as Hodge got a great read. I'm not sure. What Kreitz could have really done about it. So we're going to have a meeting of the minds here before the 1 0 as Wright has now delivered five straight balls. And there you see the trail runner in Ludlum with runners at second and third now in two outs. for a strike with the changeup. That seems to be the more reliable pitch right now for Wright. Been able to locate that off speed. And all things considered, have kept the Oklahoma bats not named Brito at bay. Oh, 
that is a dandy of a changeup in the count one and two. Hodge at third, Ludlam at second. One run in here in the seventh. On the solo shot by Brito to lead off the inning. Another change up, doesn't quite get there, and the count runs full. Driven fair down the first baseline. Hodge comes in. A rolling throw is unable to stop Ludlam, and Oklahoma gets to eight here in the seventh. Boone strikes again with an RBI single in the sixth, and now a two-run knock here in the seventh. See if Matty Wright looks to complete this game. With Bryce DeColve coming out. He will take the ball. Today, Matty Keel will take Matty over. Wilson, the junior from Colorado looking to get the final out here in this seventh inning. Keel who could not get an out yesterday. This would certainly provide some confidence for the righty moving into the bulk of conference play. Task is tall with Jada Coleman at the plate. One for three, a single and a walk. Count two and up. He'll walk three, allowed six hits and nine earned runs. Saw her ERA go from 227 to 329 yesterday. It's still a testament to how good her season has been when you allow nine runs without an out recorded. And your ERA only goes up to 3.29. There's a strike in the count three and one. Five-pitch walk for the second straight inning for Jada Coleman. And the walk totals have been so impressive for this Oklahoma team. They drew eight walks yesterday. For the Sooners, number 23, 13 walks on Friday. And there is their seventh walk here today. So 28 walks here in a three-game series. Yara Jennings takes a strike. Here's her final chance to leave Lubbock as the all-time doubles leader in Oklahoma history, needing one to surpass Sidney Romero. There's a friendly strike call on the outer half in the count two and two. Hey. 
The ball in the dirt. Both runners will advance and the count runs full. Now a payoff pitch from Keel. It's driven to center. Jennings clears the bases. Her 10th home run of the season. And Oklahoma puts up a crooked number for the first time today. Third home run of the weekend, sixth home run in the career of T.R.A. Jennings here at Rocky Johnson Field in just six games. And Ella Parker will come to the plate now. The score is 11-1. One and one. Parker takes high, three and one now. Six runs in the seventh inning for Oklahoma. As the ninth sooner here in this inning is Parker. The pitch there by Keel is spoiled away. The second walk allowed by Keel, puts Parker on and brings Brito back to the plate. Batting for the Sooners, number 33, Alyssa Brito. <laughs> Brito who homered here back in 2022 has now hit three this weekend. Second multi-home run game of the season. Last came at Long Beach State back in February. And Guido rolls over to one, and it gets by Love into left field for a base hit. Via do up second in the bottom of the seventh. McLarity and Love as well. Meanwhile, Sydney Sanders will re enter as Maya Bland ran for her earlier in the inning. Sanders swings at the first pitch and fouls it back. Keel one strike away. Good 
This Oklahoma team just refuses to swing at any junk. We have not seen many swings outside of the zone, regardless of the score, regardless of the count, and that is just a testament to this team's dominance. This pitch is grounded to that. Two and two the count. Can Keel find the pitch? Two two popped in the infield and she will walk and six strikeouts as Keeney, the Kentucky native. It's a pop-up from McClarity on the first pitch, and it's snagged by the racing glove of Boone out in right. Heaney, a second teamer in the Ace Sun last season. Also won for the Red Raiders, Virginia Zero, State Pitcher of the Fiat. Year, voted by the SI. Quite the prestigious honor with all of the huge arms out in Blacksburg with Vautech. Ariana Villa comes to the plate. Scouting report on Keeney is this, a developing changeup as Coach Gasso has tried to create more of a down ball pitch to induce more ground balls. Um, a righty who has thrown nearly 700 in her innings career. Close the door here. He fouls it off in the count two and one. Love on deck followed by Wyckoff if the inning continues. Strike to even the count two and two as Oklahoma looking to sweep Texas yet again. Should be a fun series later this season between those two. Longhorns have seemingly stayed competitive with OU, the only conference foe that, in my memory, has won more than they've lost here in the last few years. Can't wait to see Kelly Maxwell's rematch with the Cowgirls and Coach G. Plenty of good storylines to follow here this season as the Sooners will host Baylor next weekend. Texas Tech heads to Iowa State and will host UCF here to finish out the month of March on a Thursday to Saturday series. E2 to Villa's fouled away. Take strike three, and Keeney's one out away. After a pair of strikeouts yesterday for the righty. That's her first. Introduces the soon to be all conference third baseman in Riley Love if she continues this hot start. And Love has reached in all three plate appearances today. Huge cut, Riley was looking for the 10 run home run there. 
I mentioned it yesterday, what I saw from Keeney puts her in a level of class that I think can compete as the number two arm on Oklahoma. As Love slashes one foul and sits down to a final strike. One and two. The take by Love. Count runs to two and two. Texas Tech looking to extend this seventh inning. As Love cruises one foul down the left field line. Next Texas Tech softball broadcast will be in two weeks. Thursday against UCF. Be a six o'clock start time, six o'clock on Friday as well, and then a nooner on Saturday the 30th to wrap up the month of March against the newcomers in the conference in the Knights. We had a tough time with Texas this week. And there it is, called strike three ends this one as Oklahoma moves to 6-0 in the conference.